left. Oh no! Hi. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back. In a galaxy far, far away, due to coronavirus, we're taking things easy. Blind Mike. Doesn't believe in the coronavirus. <laughs> and Lucas Dixon. Oh, man. The yep. coronavirus thing. Today we're going to talk about some very publicized mm -hmm. sightings. Maybe. Let's start with the Operation High Jump. December 2nd, 1946. Admiral Richard E. Byrd led 4,000 military troops from U.S., Britain, and Australia in an invasion of Antarctica called Operation High Jump. It was right after World War II yep. during our attempt to clean up the remaining remnants of, of the Nazi regime. Yep, exactly. It was consisted of three naval battle groups. There's this theory that it was a covert operation to conquer alleged secret underground Nazi facilities in Antarctica and capture the German Vril flying disks and Thule Mercury powered spaceship prototypes that has always been denied by the US military. What's what's interesting about that word Vril, okay, wasn't that the same name of the one of the secret societies in, in, in Germany? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's so. the, the Vril Society was was one of the secret societies that existed in Germany at the time that was actively seeking out communication with extraterrestrials. That's who fully threw their funds and support towards Hitler, yes, if I'm not mistaken. exactly. And there's a lady that claims in that same society in 1919 that claimed that she had made contact with extraterrestrials. Which would be, wow, that's a good 15 years before. Yeah. The alleged Hitler obtaining one. I believe that they found, they made this communication, they made this connection with these extraterrestrials in 1919 or, or closely thereafter. And by the time we got a hold of this technology in, you know, 1942, 47, yep, 42. About that by 36, the time by the time yeah. we got a hold of it, it was already developed. It wasn't in development. It wasn't being researched. They they already. I mean, it it's almost documented fact that they had the capability to launch out of the atmosphere to go to the moon in 1938. They yeah. could have done it. They had the technology. What's saying they didn't? So my theory is is that they had this together. They made this connection with this group. We went in as an excuse. We used the war as an excuse to get involved because we no, found we'd out. we never do that. Never. never. We found out that they had this technology, and, of course, we wanted it. Two options. We either did exactly what we said. We mm. did what we did, and we took over the technology, or... We made a deal with the Nazis. It, we just were brought into the inner sanctum of this communication, and that's mm -hmm. why we had Nazi scientists come back into the United States. Every other war that time and before, we were executing prisoners yep. of war. This Operation High Jump is an example of this endeavor to capture Nazi technology and that the Nazis oh, yeah. were able to fend them off with the flying disks. Yeah, if and they the had stumbled project. on information during the end of the war, during the fall of the Third Reich, and stumbled on some documentation talking about this facility in Antarctica, that would explain the huge naval force that would have been gone, because the majority of the Nazi forces had been defeated by that point, yeah. by the time we had gone out there. So why well, the need for such a big fleet? It is a fact that in 1947 they had elements of the German army that were still active in the South Atlantic and seemed to be operating out of South America. And so that's what kind of led them it's to Antarctica. So they're saying, well, there was, well, you know, German activity in the waters around Antarctica. So that's why we were there. Well, South America, I do recall that they actually have a German built city that there you go. Germany, Germany built back then, so that was where they got this leading assumption that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's where there. one of the big ass internment camps were. 
I'm not for sure on that part. Oh no, Paraguay. I'm pretty sure it was Paraguay. Anyway, I had remembered in a documentary way back when where they were trying to just redo the history and prove that somebody, because they had gone in and could not find the dead bodies, couldn't find evidence that these mass killings had occurred. And so they went much further under the soil of they could find the uh, foundations of this building. And then I don't recall if they did or didn't find bodies, but there's a building that was just leveled in uh, once we invaded South America and the Nazis were trying to hide what they'd done. It just, yeah, it makes sense to me. That does justify from a military standpoint, if we had gone there and found those things on why wouldn't we have that many ships then to go and overkill any resistance that we were met with. Yeah. So regardless of looking for secret anything, even if we were just like trying to end it, how much fuss did Hitler still try and mention his name in a crowded room? See what happens. This was right at the time, so I'm sure America was just rattled to the core. You hear any other Nazis still exist, and you've got the full support towards the military to exterminate. You know, it wasn't very long right after World War II that yeah. we started the Cold War. That's what I am led to believe started the initial secrecy within our government is the Cold War, and we had just finished another war. It was... The people we had elected at the time were wartime generals, presidents, things like that, not leaders that you would want for a time of peace. The Nazis embraced the idea of the occult. They even Absolutely. believed that the earth could be hollow and that it was inhabited by aliens. In fact, they believed yeah. it so much, one of their missions was even designed to find an entrance to one of these earth's interior well, it brings a little little perspective to that Cabin in the Woods show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I mean, who knows? That, you know? that, Here are the but... facts of Operation High Jump. It really did happen. 4,000 troops sailed to Antarctica and find the last of the Nazi regime that seemed to be active in that area. But there's also this underlining thought that, you know, they did have technology. Were we trying to get it? Were they fended off by it? Oh, absolutely. It's one of the perks of war. Exactly. I think we leave empty-handed. That was the whole deal. I mean, with the Iraq War, it was weapons of mass destruction that we never came out with. We still left with oil. We're going to jump back a little bit to 1942, the Battle of Los Angeles. Surprisingly, not as many people know anything about this one. Yeah, you know, honestly, I, I mean, I knew it existed, but I had just chalked it up to the fact that Pearl Harbor had just happened. War of the Worlds thing. <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. So there was a lot so. in that five-year period that had happened that kind of made a lot of people just be like, well, no wonder they were jumping. Yeah. But uh, the facts are, 2 a.m. Everyone saw that shit. A radar reportedly detected unidentified objects at about 120 miles off the coast. All air defenses fully manned, air raid alarms went off, full blackout initiated across the city. Hundreds of thousands of residents turned on lights at 2 a.m. and poured into the streets to, to see what was going on. Then at 3 a.m., these objects were reported just off the coast of Santa Monica. And at 3.07, the anti-aircraft units in Santa Monica started firing off. And to no effect. To no effect whatsoever the crazy part no effect well i mean we have even us in our own military system right now have made giant advancements since then in metal alloys towards our government vehicles so try and shoot down a tank with a an old 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 like world war one fighter plane yeah try and take down today's tank you cannot <laughs> well that is yeah so, so we have made huge advancements yeah. While while this was happening, there were also reports that there was a Japanese sub off the coast while this is happening. That's actually the official reason why they did this is that they panicked because of the sub. Because of the sub and started firing into the air. And it was really yeah, it was real close to Pearl Harbor, so hold up, just by the way, towards the interest of government conspiracy. Uh, we all hate Hitler because he was exterminating <laughs> Jews and putting them in internment camps. Uh, what what did we do to those Japanese people? Could somebody remind oh, me? Oh yeah, in yeah, America, we put them in <laughs> concentration camps. Anybody? Absolutely. Anybody funded yep. by Walmart? The Waltons funded all of those Japanese internment camps. What? Really? Absolutely. Yeah. Think about that shit. Holy shit, <laughs> man! I had no idea. 
<laughs> yeah, mind, mind blown. Mind blown. Mind. <laughs> I know. I need to have one of those radio buttons that does that because I don't do it very well. There was reports that came in that a Japanese aircraft had crashed in Hollywood. There were there were three people reported to have died from fatal heart attacks during this. Oh yeah, panic's a, a powerful thing. They continued firing for over an hour. Without to no anything. effect. Finally, the ceasefire was ordered. Anti-aircraft gunners stopped, but they had used over 1,400 rounds of ammo. Caused a lot of damage, actually, to structures on the ground because they were just shooting at this thing. And a lot of Los Angeles people believed that they were being invaded by the Japanese because nobody yeah. was oh, saying yeah. what was going on. Yeah, it's. Oh, I mean, we may have done the whole Nazi thing at that point, but, you know, Japan could have easily come back up. No Japanese craft, no submarine found. No Japanese craft whatsoever was found in any way, and that's that was generally what most eyewitnesses thought they were going to see was they were going to see that we had been in a firefight yeah. with the Japanese. Please, they offered, yeah. no one offered any explanation to anyone, and instead they ended up, arresting 20 Japanese Americans for allegedly trying to signal the mysterious enemy craft. Justifications. Yeah. Within a few days, the U.S. Secretary the of the Navy, Frank Knox, and he came forward and said the entire incident was a mistake and that the U.S. Secretary of War, Henry Stimson, stated that 15 enemy aircraft had appeared over Los Angeles. That's what he claimed. The the truth is 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 to this day nobody really nobody knows what they were firing at. There's a lot no, of speculation. No, I had been, I had looked for trying to find some old video, anything, yeah, yeah. on that. Cause, well, I the mean, picture, I know it's 42, the picture but, that they that they have is very iconic. Yeah. It's the, it's all the beams of light heading up into the sky to, you know, coming together in one. And there are I've seen a lot of documentaries that love to sit there and analyze this footage and be like, you can clearly see a ship mm. in the you <laughs> cannot clearly see shit. You can barely even see the back. ground in that picture because it's dark. It's yeah. 1942, and all you see is beams of light up in the sky with with what appears to be um, shrapnel blasts up yeah. in the up in the air. But otherwise, that's it. Explanations range all the way from false alarm to weather balloons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no shit. Uh, Get the pop signal sticks, Jeff. <laughs> In 1983, the Office of Air Force History, supposedly after conducting their own study in 1942, concluded that the U.S. military defenses in California were already nervously poised for action, partly due to the attack from the Japanese submarine off the coast of Santa Barbara. The office also noted that meteorological balloons had been released prior to the incident that with attached lights and their silvery color may have easily been mistaken for aircraft. Are you fucking kidding me? 1,400 rounds of anti-aircraft mm. at a silvery object that happened to catch our eye for over it an took hour. No damage. No, no damage, took any damage. No debris whatsoever other than their own shells and the own damage that they caused themselves. There was yeah. nothing, nothing. Our national defense organization... <laughs> thought that right after Pearl Harbor, it was a good idea to attach a bunch of lights and float shit around everybody's houses. Yeah, no shit. Okay, and yeah, that does leave the convenient of uh, people were afraid of and, you know, overly afraid of Japanese because of the Santa Barbara thing. Absolutely true. Our America, America was terrified. Oh, yeah. It was absolutely terrified of anyone Japanese. That's yeah. where pretty much all of our racism so, wow, we are not nice to Japanese people. <laughs> now, I have to imagine if you were Asian and in America during World War II, you were in a camp. I believe they were checking for place of origin, and so they were mm. they were rounding it. Most of the people, at least from what I know, were in fact Japanese American. But still, it's just so who knows, it, man. But you it, know, it's so funny to me that they would even think that anybody would believe that that was the best our Air Force could do. Knowing that they had no evidence that the Japanese had anything to do with this because apparently 20 Japanese American people were pointing at what was clearly going on in the sky. They were arrested for signaling enemy craft. 1,500 other Americans. Our fucking government. God damn it. Dude, 
at that time was radar not our only defense against an airstrike? Yeah. So why would you put shit to pop up on radar right above where we were just attacked by Japanese people? Most people weren't going through the math. They weren't going no. through the chain of events oh, to be like, wait, no that math. doesn't make There's sense. No if you spoke out against your government, if you had opinions against your government, against your president, you could you could be deemed a communist. That really sped up and took off around 45, 47. Yeah, no, that's true. Which leads us... This is five years prior. ...to the Roswell incident. Or no, this is right before, yes. Which I thoroughly believe, and, and I'm convinced now, was... An actual cover up. The Roswell incident itself was a cover up to begin the UFO mythos that now protects the government to be able to do whatever they want with technology because our belief system of UFOs. Hoax. So the Roswell incident, Roswell, New Mexico, 1947. Wasn't it July 6th? 20th. June 20th, 1947. Supposedly crashed, UFO craft. Three, and then, four. Alien pilots. Three or four pilots, correct. Yeah. There is well, one there is. eyewitness testament in, I want to say, 1973 or 79 of a gentleman that was there during the recovery. He's actually in the picture of him holding the shitty foil. That's the guy. <laughs> oh, that, the guy no the shit. Officer. And he came Rip. forward in 1970, I think it was 1979. He said that when they came upon the site, there was littered debris here's the interesting thing he doesn't say anything about there being one a craft he only states debris and two he doesn't say anything about pilots or entities of any kind he doesn't mention that at all so i believe that the rest of it the fact that it was crashed you know maybe something happened and and it did crash but it was a test of ours we've heard some of the theories that one had but it was an accident something of ours had yes. taken it down yeah and that you know we had to cover it up that yeah. was what i think that was Leviatt that was talking about that wasn't it you know even though okay so the government maintains to this day that it is a quote-unquote surveillance balloon the pictures of this quote-unquote balloon that they have in 1947 is unbelievably ridiculous why would we have sent a balloon up there that was right after World War II yeah. once we decided to up our aerial forces because Japan spanked us? <laughs> yeah. Or Major Jesse Scout Marcel, plane. that was the guy's name. He even says that he believes that there is a military cover-up of recovery of alien spacecraft. I take it one step further based on the evidence that has been recovered since is that the government staged that event to provide this concept that there is alien craft and allow the public, which they have done ever since, to simply make up their own, which which is exactly what people do. They make up their own stories, and, and I'm not discrediting anyone, but if you look at what the government, one, what the government is capable of, two, the yeah. technology that does exist, it, it does, it absolutely exists, and, and if you think that people aren't willing to cross a moral line to do something to make you think that they're the good guys, especially with that kind of power, the abduction scenario, the contact scenario of meeting extraterrestrials are a combination of what Stephen Greer has said, that they are engineered biomechanical beings that are sent out like errand boys and a combination of psychological warfare where they literally stun you which has been seen vi through frequency through sound you can stun your enemy most of the time where do these happen when you're the most vulnerable in your bed asleep yep. Three, at night alone obviously so they're certainly not plucking people out of crowds they, no, they're literally not. doing it when people are the most vulnerable, so they come As in. As a matter of fact, all the multiple sightings are with nothing happening, just something nothing. floating around in the sky. No sound, no nothing, Correct. a little dispersal of lights. In and fact, most people, most people, they can be right next to someone that's sleeping or in the same house, in the same room, mm -hmm. and no one knows anything. There's virtually no sign. If you have surveillance technology and all these things that, that you're capable of, to go in and subdue the person, extract them, give this entire false memory. Why? Absolutely. It's to me. It's it is not far fetched at all 
to think that that's what oh. they're doing because they've continued to do the same shit to us in every scenario. They, they uh, broke us, really they prod us, they inject level. us with something, they let us go. Why wouldn't yep. the manipulation progress? If they originally started that way, if it was the same group of aliens, and why wouldn't the science progress eventually? Why are they still putting tiny chunks of metal in people's earlobes? I Which mean, I, I just, find crazy. I, do find I just crazy. don't understand. To me, it's easy to just plant something that, that feeds that belief. They have virtually found nothing that connects to these little things in fact in most cases they found that the body starts to almost build around them so almost yeah. like organically so it they clearly have a sense of human dna you know absolutely it, because if you were to put any sort of metal in your body your body would treat it as a foreign object correct and riddle you with infection there is not one so scenario not be, one of an abduction where someone is injected with something metal where it becomes infected. Not one. And I'm not attributing this to alien technology. I'm attributing this to our technology. I'm not saying we didn't get it from well, alien, you know, technologies or, or intellects, but I'm saying that I don't think, I think it was it much further back. Move past it and then used it in yeah. regular everyday things. I, I believe that this technology was absolutely definitively researched and developed by the Nazis and you then really they're picked they up by the us. Their fields and everything. Yes, and then picked up either by cooperating with us, which is even scarier, or hmm. by force. This is a touchy one, but I'm finding it harder and harder to believe we didn't get involved in the war to simply make it look like we were the good guys because I just, to me... Think about everybody that got involved in that war that were on our allied side, Britain, Russia. They were all the most technologically advanced as far as the world saw from then until the 80s. Roswell was basically the beginning of the UFO mythos with, you know, these pictures, this concept of the alien creatures. You know, there's a lot of things there that just, obviously, if you believe in aliens, you're going to be like, Dude, it's aliens. Show me proof then. If you follow the if you follow the people that were involved, if you follow the government agencies, the groups that were involved, that are involved in current technology, that were in their early stages even back then, like Wright Patterson, where did this shit go? It did not go to Roswell. It went to Wright Patterson Air Force Base. It never went to Roswell. That's the true Area 51, Ray Patterson. Just use the other one as a face. Anybody that ever bothered, keep it super well guarded. And if anybody ever got in, they would, they would see that there's nothing. It all points to cover-up. It all right, points to collusion, cooperation between governments. All these governments, uh, agencies that are involved in all of these things, and like we said back when, that did get involved in World War II, where this alleged technological boom came from. All of the superpowers that were on our allied forces have greatly accelerated technologically faster than the rest of the world yeah. from that time on. Companies owned by them, uh, corporations that fund the military, asteroid farming, like how we're talking about going yeah. out there and drilling and doing all that. Yeah. that. Corporations do not have the technology, and yet they are siphoning billions of dollars into it. If we were looking for a way to get the approval of spending all this money on that seemingly impossible task, would it, uh, to get the approval of everybody, you'd eventually, like you said, show a threat, and we get the okay to funnel all the money into space programs. And then what's the first business you think is going to show up? Asteroid mining. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, like, look how much, you know, exotic metals are on the moon. Exactly. The moon not, has... Yeah. I hope they so don't touch the moon. I really hope they don't touch that. Oh, they're going to they touch it, Mike. They're going to do more than touch sure. it. They're going to finger they're the shit out of it. it. Well, if they decide to touch the moon first, we're going to see some catastrophic changes here on the planet, just seeing as how it affects our tides. So 90% of all biological life on the planet. Oh, it's going to mess a lot of things up. Oh, that'll mess the planet up. That is what sustains us. You know what? If you if you look though, if you look at the priorities of world powers, governments, it's not about the sustainability of the planet. 
It's about moving no. on to the next one. Clearly. I still don't think they would start with the moon. I think what they would do is not unlike Paul Labayette has proposed with this Nikita thruster system to allow us to reach far greater distances in so much less time, like two weeks trips to Mars and shit. Yeah. Uh, if we were to be able to do that, would we not go out to the Kyber belt? NASA has been tracking mainly the extremely large asteroids potential uh, for uh, causing an, an extinction level event. If we're tracking those and we can get to them lickety split with Nikita thrusters, I believe that that is where you would first go. Yeah. You would go and hunt those down, not only assuring that they would not hit our planet and cause the catastrophic event, but we would come back carrying all of these precious metals. Yeah, See, it's a I win-win. To, I hate to say it, though, but what did your cost go up, though? For what? The thing about mining is, is how fast and how accessible it is. And the next place would be the moon for accessibility. Well, that would be the proposal behind Ben's big invasion uh, of this blue beam. Of if the invasion happens, that is a global scare to all the public. So that way we allow the military and space programs to take all of the funding. Correct. The whole Bob Lazar nonsense with his the Element 115, yeah. how it was for experimental propulsion fuel. Yep. Why did they let him go out there and say it? Because it was supposed to allow the warp drive us to bend time and space and to just instantly disappear. What better way to put that illusion off than with an illusion? Yeah. A fucking hologram. It looks like you're going from here to there. You can easily have a second hologram set up at a much bigger distance to where it blinks and then it's over here exactly. without the need for moving because it's doing it effortlessly and without sound that incident where what was it eisenhower had to send the shoot them down order uh, uh above truman. DC that we did in one of those truman, it was truman yep. it was. yeah doing that above the dc that could have easily been a similar situation absolutely holograms going scrambled the jets they heard the jets nobody heard the ufos so if it was just a demonstration of how quickly you could pull something over on anybody, it was very effective. Well, and just like the War of the Worlds situation, so, yeah, you know. Here we are 70 years later. UFOs exist. The problem is, are they really extraterrestrial or is it government? And we find ourselves leaning more towards government. But we're going to cut this motherfucker off at this point because we are starting to get super deep. And it leads into a whole nother list of things. Check into the next one where we follow this thought into Project Bluebeam. Next episode, right. we're going to go into the whole deal, the whole kit and caboodle conspiracy involved in this that uh, word has what it involves... What government's doing that you don't know about. <laughs> and involves the second coming of Christ in holographic form. Tune in for our next show. This has been UFO No. 